All right, so I've got a 59 that's uh, not reading properly suddenly. It has a bad cap. And I thought I'd go over um, how to diagnose that. Um, so what happens is it was working just fine yesterday, but now when I try to read cards, what happens is I get, I get strange errors. So like 21, it does read it, it stops, but it displays a strange, I don't know what, the, I can't, don't know where the error codes are on what that actually means. But that's side two, it shows the two, but it's got a two in front of it, no matter what I do. Um, these cards are fine, uh, they can be read on another machine I've got here just fine. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is these four caps right here, this, these black ones, all go bad. They eventually all go bad. They're all in the state of decay. Um, also, what can happen when these goes bad, depending upon what occurs, it can also take out this chip. Uh, the chip is readily available still today, real easy to get from anywhere, real cheap. It's a LM324, real straightforward. The caps are kind of, are, you can't use a bigger cap because there's no room here. So you really got to get this same type of bullet tantalum cap, which Keymet and other people make. So you can still get those. So how do you determine if the cap's bad? Well, it's easy. So you grab the meter and you use the negative side of the terminal, so the top one. And then you measure the output of these op amps should all be very close to zero. The op, there's four of them on here. Um, there are four heads four tracks on the head for the reader, and each one of those goes to a cap. If any of these caps have DC leakage on them, then what you end up with is DC in the, in the, in the op amp circuit, and that amplifies it. So what you end up with is a whole bunch of DC on the output of the op amp. The output of the op amp on the 324s is on the last pin on all four edges. So, for example, if we look at this one, um, you can see that's very little. We look at this one, very little. We look at this one, very little. Sorry, I should be showing this. So all four of these corners, see if I can get up here and show that. So here it's almost nothing. Um, but on this op amp, on this channel over here, We've got a solid three volts. That's the full rail output of that op amp. So there's something wrong there. Um, then if we come down here, um, we go through, and there's an easy way to look at this without taking the case off. You could just probe the negative terminal. I, I do have this plugged into power, incidentally. You can't really see that here, but I've got an adapter plugged in here. And that's a DC adapter that's coming in. So I have enough juice in order to be able to run the card reader from it. I don't need the battery pack for that. This is also um, kind of a parts unit. It was working great until today. <laughs> so, but battery corrosion. Battery corrosion occurs right in this area where my probe is. Um, and it discolors, you guys, everybody's probably seen it, it discolors a lot of the leads here. These tantalum caps are supposed to be hermetically sealed, but the corrosion can get in through the little leads inside the cap and cause a problem with the tantalum, which causes DC leakage. So these are, I've cleaned the, 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 this off. This was pretty messy um, with some leftover corrosion, put a temporary terminal on there, you know, so it's, it was not a good site. And it was all working until it was working for, I don't know, like a month. And, um, but it has died now. And it, it, can, it can write cards well, and, but that won't stay that way. That can change too. It won't read a card at all now. Um, anyway, okay, so then now if, we, if you probe each one of these, both sides of these should be zero. So if you probe each side of these capacitors, you should see close to zero volts. Like that's 0 0.16, that's 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.15, or close. That's probably a little funky. There it is. 
Now this cap though, I know this one's the one that's bad. So if we probe on this side, we get 0.16, we've got 17 about where we should be, but this side, we've got a volt. So what we've got is we've got some DC leakage occurring here. Um, and this, it, there may also be a problem in the op amp. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna st start by just swapping out the cap. And then um, if that doesn't clear it, then I'm gonna swap out the chip. Um, but this is, this is, this is gonna happen to every 59. Um, these caps are all fading. I've pulled these out before. I'll pull these out again and I'll replace all four of them um, because they're, and measured them and they all have DC leakage. So all of these are in a process of failing on every calculator, every 59 that I've measured, um, they've, all got, they've all got something going on. So, um, so in order to make these calculators last for reading and writing, you must replace these four caps. Working the board is pretty easy. It's a pretty nice PC board. So doing the soldering and getting them out and everything is all pretty straightforward as long as you're good at working that kind of stuff with a soldering gun. Um, and the chip is also pretty easy to get out relatively um, as long as you're good at doing that stuff and it's pretty straightforward. So um, anyway, this is a typical failure um, right here. That's one volt and that ain't supposed to be one volt. That's supposed to be just like these others, which is basically zero. So there's, there's how to kind of diagnose. So if you've got a reading problem on a 59, you can take a meter real quick, uh, plug in an adapter, even the regular AC adapter, just turn it on and then probe the, all the sides of these caps. They should all be almost zero. If you see one that's not zero, that's up like this, like a volt, then the caps are bad and they have to, then they should all be replaced. I think the corrosion kind of leaks in on the pins and gets inside there and causes corruption, but these types of bullet tantalum caps are well known to be um, really all fading away and causing issues. So anyway, so if you've got a 59 that's not reading, um, besides all the normal stuff, you know, what you, you know, want to do is you want to clean the rolling, you know, thing. You want to use the, 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 um, you want to use the head cleaning card, right? You know, you want to, you want to do all that stuff before you get to this level. But I mean, if you measure this and you find DC voltages here, then that's the issue. Um, it needs to be addressed. It's not going to read. Also, what can happen too is I've seen these get bad enough to where um, there's actually DC voltage present on the heads. Um, when there's a DC voltage present on one of the channels of the heads, every card you run through there is going to get erased. It's going to get that track just wiped out. So you do want to be careful with a new calculator that you don't know, and you probably should measure these to make sure before you run any cards through it because you're going to lose information on cards. Um, anyway, there we go. I was talking about how the caps um, in this 59 um, go bad, the tantalum caps. And so I've clipped this one out real quick so I can measure it and show you what I'm talking about. So um, if you use, uh, I've got the meter set in, in microfarads right now. So if you use just, if you just look at microfarads, then this cap looks relatively okay. It's supposed to be 33, so it is reading high, but it looks relatively okay. However, if you take it over and you look at it for DC leakage, for ohms, there's another problem. This, this shouldn't be registering stuff. And it does. This will top out at some high value, but not be, it won't be an infinite. So this has DC leakage. This is bad. <laughs> so, um, so this cap is in a state of failure. Um, and it's time for a new one. I'm going to temporarily put in something else. I'm going to put a different type of cap just to check to make sure that was the problem or see if the, um, see if the chip itself might be bad. All right, so I uh, replaced the cap with a temporary, with a monolithic ceramic temporarily um, until I get some, uh, until I get the, the new parts in. Um, I did end up having to change the chip. Um, it wasn't just the cap. The uh, LM324 was also bad. Um, luckily, when I got these, I got a whole stick of them um, from, uh, from Mouser, so that was easy enough. Um, but yeah, that, that 324 um, was toast. Um, so, interesting, interesting. Um, so, 
the, it was the 324. Um, uh, the cap, of course, was also bad, um, but this 324 had failed. And that's really interesting to me because um, maybe there's something, I've seen a lot of these, and I've wondered whether it was the cap that caused it or whether the 324 had actually failed. Now, I'm starting to wonder now if maybe the 324s have got something going on with them. Um, so, um, I mean, these were some of the first ones made. So these are old chips. This was uh, 81, 44th week of 81. Um, so this is, a, this is a pretty old part. So anyway, um, uh, then the new 324s actually have better performance. Um, so that's all good anyway. They're better for a bunch of reasons. So anyway, so now this, this works just happy as can be. Um, so now uh, it's uh, working great. Um, just boom right away. Um, and I can write just fine too. Um, whoops. And I'll write onto this card. So that works great. And um, let me turn it off and back on and just load that same card so oh whoops well trust me those cards really wore out i've been <laughs> using this one quite a bit so uh there we go so um anyway so it all works fine um it uh that also is, seems to work pretty good um uh, the writing is is good because I've also got I've got one on a um, sorry, move this over. I've also got one over here on a uh, on a printer that's got all the mods and is overclocked. Um, but um, so it can read it can read these just fine. Um, so it's obviously doing the correct type of reading. Also, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right from this modded overclocked machine and let's go over and see if we can read it on a standard machine so now we'll move back over here to this one and let's see if we can read it Doo -doo -doo. yep we can so even though this even though the other machine is overclocked um, and writing patterns on the card um, in a faster manner, um, it still is able to exchange cards. This is only a 10% overclock, but um, it is reading cards from other machines and writing cards that other machines can read. So, uh, so that's a good thing. Anyway, so that was quite surprising. My calculator that I had left absolutely alone without any changes to it um, turned out to have turned out to fail from yesterday, um, and it. May the caps, the cap at one cap was bad, but it may have been the 324 that actually failed. So that's quite interesting.